Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and another crochet video. This time it's a little different, I'm delving into more of the business side of things. I know there's quite a few of you who watch my videos who have asked about the business side of crochet in the past, so I wanted to make this video as advice for you and any sort of tips that I wish that I would have known before starting. This is also just a very quick disclaimer, but I am no expert. I'm learning this stuff as I go. My crochet business is still very new, but I still wanted to just share what I've learned so far to help you in any sort of way. For those who are new to this channel, I have a crochet business called Didi's Crochet. And very recently, I've been preparing for a brand relaunch. So I thought what better time to film this sort of video. Okay, let's talk business. So when I was first setting up my crochet business, I needed to decide what type of, I guess you could call it business model, I wanted to follow. And after researching a few other crochet businesses that I looked up to, I started to figure out that most were either categorised into made to order products or limited pieces. And I think whatever you choose to focus on depends on how much time you have to crochet and what you prefer creatively. With a made to order business, what I mean by that is very simply, people place an order, you make it, you send it. Whereas if you're just producing limited pieces, then you're sort of just creating off your own back with no specific order in mind. The pros to a made to order business is that you can build a brand identity. So a lot of other people who do this, they recreate and make the same products over and over again. And over time, your audience then becomes familiar with the products. And so when you see a photo of this on Instagram, you're like, oh, that's this person. There's also less waste with this type of business because you're only producing what orders need to be filled. And when you're making the same products over and over again, hopefully production should become a little bit faster because you get used to the patterns and the process. The cons to this model is that sometimes you can be limited creatively because I know from when I've seen other people do this, they have a set range of products that they stick to. And I've also noted down time management if you do have lots of orders. Now for limited pieces, the pros to this are that you have much more creative freedom because you're creating one-off pieces that might be totally different every time. And because of that, there's also an exclusivity to your products because no two are the same. And also because of that, you can sort of up the price a little bit because it's so exclusive. The cons to this sort of model are that sometimes you will have stock that is in storage because it's not been sold. And when you are in production, because you don't have a specific person you're making this for, you will just have to make a decision on the sizing. As for selling platforms, I can only speak as someone who's based in the UK, so some of these platforms might not be available to you. I started out using Big Cartel for my own website, so I have a URL and and I don't have to pay any fees because Big Cartel actually allow you to have five products on your website free of charge. But for that, you do need a business PayPal account, which I do recommend. I also had a vintage page, which was really, really good. That's where most of my sales came from. Sadly, I don't have it anymore because I got kicked off, but that's another thing. <laughs> Vinted don't allow commercial selling on their platform, so just be really careful if you do. But there is also Depop, which is another similar platform. Just be aware, obviously, of fees. And that also applies if you have an Etsy shop as well, which I do have now and is going to be my main focus with my big cartel website. But don't forget, you don't just have to sell crochet items. There are loads of other things that crochet businesses do now. For example, if you're good at writing crochet patterns, you can sell them on Etsy and Ribbler. I've seen other crochet businesses sell crochet accessories, so hooks, yarn, little stitch markers, hook charms as well. I've seen those get really big at the minute. When starting out, keep your expenses as low and realistic as possible, and then when orders generate, you can upgrade packaging and crochet supplies. I shopped for my yarn on Lovecrafts, I use the brands Paintbox Yarns and Yarn and & Colours, and if you want to shop there too, then I have an affiliate link in the description that helps out this channel. I stuck to necessities for packaging, so that's business cards as my clothing tags, blank address labels because I didn't have access to a printer, mailing bags and tissue paper. I sourced all of these from Etsy and top tip, always contact Etsy sellers directly or see if they have their own website because most of the time they want to avoid Etsy fees so they'll offer a discount or cheaper price. As for extras, I'm now upgrading to things like fabric labels and custom stickers which add a thoughtful touch to orders.
When pricing your products, keep in mind everything that goes into the process, starting with cost of materials, labour, whether you charge by the hour or a fixed rate for each piece, packaging and postage. Also research other similar products from other businesses to help grasp an idea of a price bracket, or even better, ask your audience through Instagram polls for example. I am getting better at charging more for my products, but I will say that when I first started, I definitely undercharged, which I don't recommend. So now you have all these products that you've made, you're now gonna have to advertise and market them for your audience. All of my advertising goes through social media. So personally, I have an Instagram, a TikTok, my YouTube, and a Pinterest. I feel like managing social media is always a subjective topic. My main account is probably my Instagram which is at Dee Crochet if you want to follow. I don't post every day. When I first started out I tried to stick to three times a week so that was usually two pictures and some sort of reel and I do repurpose my reels content for my TikTok and YouTube shorts. I feel like I'm not really in a position to offer too much advice on what to do with social media. I will just say Stick to your brand, always, always. Whatever content you're producing, make it recognisable to you and your personality. For product pictures, I would say stick to your basic shots for the selling platforms. Styling shots to show your audience how you can wear it, what you can do. And also any behind the scenes of you making the product to build that creator audience relationship. As for marketing your brand, I would say ask yourself the question of what makes you you. For example with my own brand if I were to answer that I always try to have eco-friendly packaging, I keep my products vegan friendly and like I said before I also try to include as much of my own personal style as possible. Okay so just a few extra general tips that I found really really helpful. The first is create business goals so set up a document and create three headings three months, six months, and 12 months. And under each of those headings, create goals for your business that you want to achieve. I would recommend starting the goals small and then building up to larger. As an example, I first had the goals of setting up my website, creating an efficient home workspace. And then under 12 months, which is the larger goals, you can set things maybe like a revenue target. And my goals also included things like my social media following, having outdoor photo shoots, just have a think about what you want to achieve with your business and having them visually there can sometimes keep you working forward and have it as a reminder. And it's nice because after every three months, six months, etc., you can go back to the list and you can tick off everything that you've achieved. And even if you haven't, you can just then pass it on to the next monthly goal. And as another extra tip, keep records of everything that you do with your business. So obviously that includes the financial side for all of your expenses and income, but also have a document for any patterns that you create and any custom orders that you have. It's just always gonna be useful to have them there for any tax return purposes or for whatever reason that you might need to reference in the future. Well, everyone, I hope that was somewhat informative and helpful to you if you are thinking of starting your own crochet business. There's obviously so much more that I could go into detail with, but those are just a few things that I know people have asked in the past. And if you do have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll try to help you out. Before you head off, make sure to give this video a thumbs up if it did help you in any way. <laughs> make sure to subscribe to this channel for more crochet content. Thank you for watching as always and I will see you in the next one.